I miss the old CN, with banger shows CN, city with road CN, comedic gold CN, not the new CN, new 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 CN, pink yellow blue CN, the shows are few C- <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a new writer. Things are pretty busy here. Anyway, Cartoon Network went trending because of viral tweets talking about their plan for Cartoon Network. I decided to give the article a little bit of a closer look. Cartoon Network and Adult Swim president Michael Oline knows that you have questions about the fate of the two networks in the new Belt Titan Warner Bros. Discovery era, and it has changed, but we're not dead, he insists. The fact that he insists that they aren't dead means that the conversations around this had merit. There is no way that you can dump that much of your catalog away, barely have any new shows or episodes this far on the horizon, appear to be in debt because of the merger, and make anyone who recognizes the pattern believe that you guys aren't bleeding. They literally were removed clearance a short while ago, Craig of the Creek is basically done, and even some of the future projects like Driftwood have been scrapped. Now, I would not envy the role of Michael. I think being the president at this time presents a lot of roadblocks, a lot of consumer trust to rebuild, a literal brand to rebuild, and a medium that can't take a lot more losses. It was weird to wake up a couple weeks ago and read our obituary as we were alive. We've got more stuff coming next year than we've had this year. If you hear anyone say that Cartoon Network is dead, no one thinks that if they go to channel 32, by the way, what was your channel number for Cartoon Network? Cause mine was 32. That there's like a black void that will suck you in. What people usually usually mean by this is that the Cartoon Network that they have known has been replaced with one that they don't have the same warmth with. It is literally under the Turner Warner Bros umbrella. I think it will be fine for decades to come. These new shows are coming up in a new era, away from the renaissance of the 2010s, and you'll be appealing to people now who are 10 to 15 years younger than the ones who grew up on Gumball, regular show, Steam Universe, and Adventure Time. Also saying that you have more stuff coming next year than this year when you removed so so much is like saying even though you lost your arms and legs, you'll be getting a tiny cowboy hat next year and that'll be more than you had last year. As part of the ongoing downsizing at Warner Bros Discovery, the company's decision to merge all development for Cartoon Network Studios and Warner Bros Animation under a single entity caused some alarms in that community. Cartoon Network's marketing chiefs also recently left and Warner Bros Discovery confirmed that it was pulling back on Kids and Family Fair for its HBO Max streamer. Hard recent decisions included the cancellation of Tuka and Birdie, which has been rest skewed by Adult Swim after Netflix initially cut it. I was glad that we were able to give it two more seasons to be able to let that thing evolve in front of people. Now, I don't know too much about the latest seasons of Tuka and Birdie, but I know my good peer Jason Blade has a great video on this topic, which I'll put in the card. I will give them all the credit in the world for Tuka and Birdie, and even back in the day, bringing back Samurai Jack and finishing that too. I love decisions like that, but we can't skip over this. One of the problems with merging so many animation studios is that you'll have less opportunities to find work. It gets more competitive for budding young artists to find a major network job, and it also reduces the output and best ideas are gonna play, which makes sense in theory, but we gotta remember that best is subjective. Most of these studios will produce a dud, if not several, over the course of a decade. And when you take into consideration that there has been a bigger focus on established IPs, literally they're talking about bat wheels here, having less opportunities will mean having less original stories told. And I don't think I really care for another Powerpuff Girl show. We're not looking to cancel shows. It's just that we have to allocate the money we have in ways that we think are going to have the biggest impact and please the most number of people. You want to keep those creative relationships with people and see what else you can do. This is a statement I think a lot of people in the community find hard to believe and I understand both sides. For one, television animation doesn't inherently make a lot of money, especially with the models these network companies use. I don't think Cartoon Network greenlight shows ultimately cancel them, but I do think like with Nickelodeon, some shows from the outside looking in, it looks like they just throw them into the deep side of the pool and if they swim they get another season what the fuck is this what 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 the f is this? This shift at Cartoon Network also comes as HBO Max canceled six upcoming animated series, including Batman, Cape's Crusader, Merry Little Batman, The Day the Earth Blew Up, a Looney Tunes movie, Bye Bye Bunny, a Looney Tunes musical, Did I Do That to the Holidays, a Steve Urkel story, and The Amazing World of Gumball the Movie. With HBO Max getting out of the kids and family business, it's up to Cartoon Network slash Adult Swim to essentially now be a supplier for such content for the streamer. The go forward notion is that Cartoon Network and Adult Swim 
Slim will be the main source of animation at Max, and we're gearing up to share with them all the stuff we have in development right now. We talk to those guys every week, pretty much, and coordinate and plan our activities together. Firstly, you heard it here, folks. The Gumball movie is pretty much guaranteed to not come out, which means that my video on it, where everyone was holding out hope, we can now look back on it and say that it was a bad finale. Taking it off of me, though, to see HBO Max leaving the animation side is interesting because it was such a strong push on Max. You know, you had Jelly Stone, the Fungies, Ting and Seek. I know you guys have watched all the episodes of these shows. And it seems like now that the subscriber numbers have settled in, they're now shifting strategy, quote unquote. I was excited for Cape Crusader personally, and the rest, it seemed like more of what we already have, but I'm pretty sure I or someone else would have enjoyed it. The new plan is a bit of a return to the original charter for Cartoon Network. When I joined the network in 1996, to our minds, it wasn't a kid network, it was an animation network. We said it was for a psychographic, not a demographic. The best animation works on a couple of levels and works for a couple of different audiences at once. And I think that's where Cartoon Network proper is coming back to. Well, first of all, earlier in this article, you say that Bat Wheels is like number one for boys two to four. So I don't know about that demographic line, but this is the quote that everyone is squealing in their chairs about. Dude, we're getting the band back together. Oh, let's go, that's class. <laughs> Now, look, feel free to crucify me, but even if Cartoon Network puts out a lot of great shows and maybe brings back a show or two, it will never return to the original charter because that network was just one half of that feeling you have. The other part of the feeling that people have for 2000s and 2010s Cartoon Network was the time period. It was how old you were at the time. It was the culture, the pop culture, everything going around around it, like the, the aesthetics. And for that reason alone, I feel like promising the original or the old is just gonna be fluff. It's standards that can't be reached because you can't step into the same river twice. And I know some people are gonna think that I'm a buzzkill and that you can long for the old Cartoon Network. And, and it's just like- No, you don't. You miss how you felt back when you were watching those videos at that time, because you were probably in school and you probably just came home from school and just watched videos all day and had a great time. But now you're growing up and now you have responsibilities and now you're in college and you have a job. Mm -hmm. and you, you're probably stressed out a lot. Oweline points to Adventure Time as a brand guidepost for the network moving forward. Our median age is 29 during the day, so the path forward is to lean into that and make really great stuff that appeals to young adults and kids can watch it too. One of the biggest takeaways from this is that the median age is 29 and that we have articles saying this because yes, adults watch animation and not just The Simpsons and Rick and Morty. Adventure Time is a great brand guidepost. However, that's not the original Cartoon Network charter, but I digress. I would even go as far as to say that when working on the CN video, it made me appreciate the 2010s and the years leading up to it just as much as I appreciate the 2000s and the years leading up to it. Sure, I relive my childhood playing Sly Cooper, the original Sims, and going on Neopets, but it will never be my childhood because I went through it already, and thus I will never feel the novelty of doing things like that again. I will never feel the novelty of signing up to Roblox for the first time and playing Crossroads, Sword Fight on the Heights, work at a pizza place, because I already felt it. That's why the 2010s was so amazing. It was unique and it was unique for the people growing up at that time and also the people who had the experience of watching early 2000s shows. It had its own identity with great shows that wanted to stand on their own and more importantly, they had the time and the resources to blossom into these amazing stories and experiences that young adults and kids can watch together. Upcoming Cartoon Network has previously greenlit new episodes of the preschool series Bugs Bunny Builders and Sesame Street Mecha Builders as well as new seasons of Craig of the Creek, Wee Baby Bears, and Teen Titans go. There's the premiere of Gremlin Secrets of the Mogwai, Unicorn Warriors Eternal, and My Adventures with Superman. New episodes of Summer Camp Island and Jellystone are on deck, as are the premieres of the heroic quest of Valiant Prince Ivando and Ayanu, Child of Wonder. The fact that Teen Titans Go outlived so many shows is incredible. Begrudgingly, I think the show earns my respect in that aspect. It got a movie, a few crossovers, so many seasons, so many specials, marathons, preferential treatment, I can't get a new season of Mau Mau. Children's Entertainment is done! I'm interested to see the new shows, and more importantly, I want to see these shows stand on their own legs. The kids growing up today do not need to relive the 2000s or the 2010s. Make the 2020s have its own statement, led by banger shows and iconic characters, and you'll be fine. There's an entire Chips Ahoy family-sized pack of creative people who are here today who will move to LA, even outside of this country, will move to LA to work on telling the best stories that kids today can relate to, but the entire family can enjoy. Sometimes people think we're niche 
much or think that animation is small and don't understand the power of it. It helps having Rick and Morty for everyone to understand like, oh, this can be big. This can be a popular thing. And we've been expanding Adult Swim globally. When we get out of thinking of Cartoon Network as just living and dying based on kid revenue, it actually frees us up to do more stuff and lean into what our core always was, which is let's advance what the animation art form can do and create iconic stuff. Well, we will learn in the next few years if advancing the animation art form and creating iconic stuff is what Cartoon Network is capable of doing. We will learn in the years coming up if original ideas and fresh ideas is what Cartoon Network wants to do. It only takes a few shows that truly resonate with people to signify a new era, a new golden age. We've seen it twice. And if you wanna see more of what I mean, check out this video here where I speak about the 2010s and you'll see exactly what I mean. Until then, take care. Enough out.